So whether you're completely new to Photoshop or you just get overwhelmed by it altogether, in this video I'm going to show you a fast and effective way to make your photos look professional here in Photoshop. So let's get started. What's going on guys, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com, home to editing tutorials, camera gear reviews, tricks and tips to help you improve your photography and photo editing a whole lot faster. So if you're new to this channel and you love all of that stuff, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with more videos like today. So in today's video, we'll talk about how to edit a photo in Photoshop and turn those boring raw images into something really captivating, colorful, and way more professional than what you started with. Even if you're completely new to photo editing or Photoshop, the techniques that we talk in today's video will drastically improve your photos and make those edits that look really professional and that you can be proud of to post online, share with your friends, family, whatever. Now before we hop into the computer, make sure to stick around until the end of the video as there's something that you won't want to miss out on that's going to be the absolute best way to kickstart your photography and photo editing journey. So with that, let's get started. So when you first open your raw photo into Photoshop, Camera Raw will appear, which is this window that you see on my screen. And Camera Raw is basically the feature that you edit your photo in before you bring it into the main bit of Photoshop. So with Camera Raw, you can do your basic contrast and lightness adjustments. We'll do a little bit of color adjustments, but I'm going to show you a very straightforward and fast way to edit your photos with Camera Raw. So the first thing that I like to do when I open my raw photo into Camera Raw here is I'll drag down my highlights and I'll drag up my shadows. So this is a really fast way to balance out and make your photo look extremely flat because we're wanting to make everything pop as much as possible. Once we've done that, we can go down to our whites and blacks slider because now we need to add back in some whites and we need to add back in some shadow because no photo is going to be complete without those two things. So starting on my white slider, I'm going to drag that up a little, brightening things up, and now it just looks really washed out. So I'll then go to my black slider and I'll drag that back down to add back in some life and contrast into our photo. Now if it still looks a little bit too flat in HDR for you, you can even go to your shadow slider and drag that back just a little bit to add even more life in if the black slider just isn't doing the job for you. So for me, that's looking pretty good. I might add a little bit more white and again, the amount that you do this is going to depend image to image. After I do those basic lightness adjustments, I'll go up here to my color temperature and the color temperature basically dictates how cool or how warm your image will look. Now you want to kind of stay in the same range of what your photo naturally is because if you push it too much, it's going to look a little bit silly. So I want to just warm up my image a little bit from where it was. Now, if you do an adjustment in Camera Raw like this, and you're like, ah, oh, I really don't like what I'm doing, I want to go back and reset this adjustment. Rather than having to type in zero or whatever color temperature you had previously, you can just double click on this slider here, double click on that, and it will reset back to normal. So now that we're reset, I'll just drag this up a little just to add a little touch of warmth. That looks great to me. And now we'll go down to my tint slider, and this will either add magenta or purple and some green. So whatever kind of floats your boat, you don't even have to touch this one if you don't want to, but I think I'll just add a little bit of magenta to my photo. Now this is already looking pretty good to me here, but we still have a lot to go. It's still looking pretty flat and not too great. So let's do some basic color adjustments here in Camera Raw as well. So I'll go over here to my calibration tab and that's this little film strip. I'll click on that and now we have a red, green, and blue primary channel option. So how I like to operate this calibration tool is to start with my most dominant color range. So in this case, that's the blue color. So I'll grab my blue primary hue and I can drag this down and notice how it changes the colors in my photos. Now I have this cyan and orange look or if I go this way, I have a purple and green look. So for me, I think the cyan and the orange is a little bit more appealing. So I'll drag that down and somewhere in there looks really nice to me. And I'll even drag up the saturation to make it pop even more. The next color that I'll go to is my green primary since it's all up in my ridge line and stuff. So I'll grab that green hue and drag that around. I can play around with it either way just to see the result that it gives me. And then I'll decide that going to the left works best for this image. And so I'll put it somewhere in there and then I can maybe play around with the saturation. I really do like saturation and color so in this case I'll just add a little bit of saturation to my green primary as well. Now, since we're here, I might as well do up the red primary channel. So here is the red hue, drag that up and down. In this case, I kind of like adding a little bit to the right 
on the hue. So that looks great there. And I'm not going to touch the saturation. Now our photo is really coming together. Our colors are popping. Our sky looks better. Everything just looks more eye catching. So with that, we've basically achieved what we're going for here in camera raw and we're ready to move into Photoshop. So I can click open image down here. Now our image is officially here in Photoshop and we can start doing our fine adjustments to our photo. Now the first thing that is wrong with this image, and if you're editing a landscape image like this one, you may run into a similar issue, is my horizon is not straight at all. So to fix that issue, I'm going to first duplicate my background. So this way I have a copy of my layer if anything goes wrong. So I'll press Command or Control J to duplicate that background. I'll just set this name to photo. And now I'll grab my crop tool by pressing C and I can grab this little icon here that says straighten so I'll just click on that icon and now if I go to my horizon I'll click and I'll drag out all along my horizon and Photoshop will use this as a reference point to be like okay this is what he wants to straighten so I'll let go and now Photoshop automatically adjusts my image and now I have a nice straight horizon super easy click that checkbox to commit to that and now we can do the real adjustments to our photo so the first adjustment I like to do when I open my photo here is to add a curves adjustment layer I can click on my curves icon right here or I can go down to this little half circle and go up to curves whichever one works for you now if you're totally new to this curves adjustment which is also in Lightroom and other photo editing softwares but let's say you've never edited a photo in your life all that you really need to know is that this half of the grid is the light areas of your image this half of the grid will affect the dark areas of your image. If you drag the curve up, it's going to lighten your photo. If you drag the curve down, it's going to darken your photo. So now with that basic information of curves locked in in our minds, we can now add a little bit of contrast. So I'll click up here to add a bit of highlights. And of course, that looks a little bit too bright overall. So I'll click down below, add another anchor point, and bring down my shadows, adding more overall contrast. So turning that on and off, you can see the really crazy difference that that makes to make our photo pop because if you're ever wanting something to pop in your image contrast is going to do the trick for you now the curves adjustment doesn't just affect the exposure it also can affect some color as well so if you click on this RGB tab you can go red green or blue so you can add any of those colors into your photo in this case I want to take away some of the red from my sky and add a bit more cyan so clicking on my red channel if I drag this up it's going to add red if I drag it down it's going to add cyan pretty straightforward but what I'll do for this case since I want to affect my clouds I'll add an anchor point up in the highlight areas and I'll drag that down just a little bit to add more cyan up in my sky in the light areas of my photo but of course I don't want this to affect my whole image so I'm going to click in the center here, add another anchor point and drag this back up to center. So now that red adjustment isn't affecting the grass area of my photo. So now that looks pretty good to me. I'm all done with that adjustment. Let's see how that looks. Turn that on and off. So just that one adjustment has already made a really nice difference in our photo. The next thing that I want to do is to lighten up some of the areas on the trees here. I don't want to lighten the whole image. I just want to lighten some of the trees. So to do that, this time I'm going to grab my brightness and contrast adjustment layer. I'll add a little bit of brightness like this, maybe a little bit of contrast. And this is what I want to affect my trees, but I don't want it to affect my whole image. So how can we do that? How can we isolate our effect? And so if we look over to our layers panel and we see this white box, that is called a layer mask. And a layer mask dictates what is visible and what is transparent in your photo. If you want to learn more about layer masks, I'll leave a link down below to a tutorial that I created earlier talking all about them. But for this case, you just have to know that white is 100% visible and black is 100% transparent. So since we have white here, that means that our effect is fully visible, but we want to make it black. So clicking on that layer mask, we can press Command or Control I to invert that layer mask. And now everything is black, everything is transparent. So now with that black layer mask, we can paint white onto it to make certain areas visible. So I'll grab my brush tool just by clicking over here. I'll make sure white is set to my foreground color. And now I can just go and paint along anywhere that I want this brightness and contrast layer adjustment to affect. So for me, it's just the trees, maybe a bit of this island. And you can also resize your brush by pressing the bracket keys to make it smaller or larger. Lighten up that area, maybe a little bit of the ocean here. And now if you look down at our layer mask, you can see how we have those white areas. So that's what's being affected. 
everything that is black is not being affected by our adjustment. Layer masks might seem a little bit confusing and overwhelming right now, but as you get used to them and you practice more in Photoshop, layer masks will become your best friend. Now our image has really come to life, our colors are popping, everything is looking really awesome, but one last step I love to do is to add a little bit of lightness along my sky or my horizon to make things look a little bit more glowy. So what I'll do once again is grab a brightness and contrast adjustment layer, I will lighten up just a little bit so I see the general effect of what I want happening on my sky. But of course, we once again don't want it affecting our whole image. So I'm going to press Command or Control I with that layer mask selected. And this time we're going to add a gradient. So I'll grab my gradient tool here. I'll click up to adjust my gradient. I'll go to my basics group and I'll click this foreground to transparent gradient. I'll click OK and make sure my foreground color is set to white. So that means I'll have a white gradient. Now with that white gradient selected, I can click and drag out a gradient and it's gonna apply that nice brightness adjustment that we had onto our layer mask. So if you look at our layer mask, it now has a really cool gradient. If you totally hate what you just did, you can press Command or Control Z to undo it. And I can try this a few different times. I can try it just straight down like that. I can maybe do it from the side, whatever floats your boat totally up to you. Now say you don't want to have a straight gradient, you want to have like a circle sun glow gradient or something like that, you can also click on this radial gradient right here and by clicking and dragging out it'll now create more of a circle gradient if you look at our layer mask it's more of like a circle and so that can be a really nice way to isolate that brightness effect even further if you're wanting it to look more like the sun or something like that. In this case I'm actually really happy with how that looks maybe add that a couple times in and now that's looking really great turning that on and off it just brings a little bit more life to that one side of our photo and now after a few adjustments in camera raw and just a couple of layer adjustments we've now completely transformed our image made it look more captivating more eye-catching and definitely something that you could be proud of and post to share with other people. Now again, the way that you edit a photo will depend image to image and the amount of adjustments needed per photo is gonna depend on how light or dark or the time of day that you shot the image. Now the workflow that I just shared in today's video is a really fast and effective way to make your photos look a little bit better, a little more professional using Photoshop. Eventually as you work in the program and you apply this workflow more and more, you'll find a editing style that works for you. You'll see what kind of lightness and contrast you like. You'll see what colors you like. You'll see if you like things flat or more colorful, it's totally up to you. It all depends on your personal style. And that comes along by just editing a little bit more. Now if Photoshop feels overwhelming to you, you feel like you wish you could decode this program and edit those photos like you've always wished you could, then I can't recommend my Photoshop Essentials course enough to you. My Photoshop Essentials course is a seven hour course with 10 chapters and over 100 learning outcomes and it gives you the steps and techniques to edit images like you've always dreamed of. When I first started editing in Photoshop, the thing that I struggled with the most was taking an image from point A and getting it to the point B that I had in my head. I just didn't know the steps and techniques needed to get there. So my Photoshop Essentials course covers the entire program. It covers everything from the basics of Photoshop all the way through to building an effective and actionable workflow that I use in my professional photography on paid client gigs. This course also comes complete with raw images so you can follow along at all times, direct email contact with me, so you can always ask me questions if you ever feel stuck, brush packs, cheat sheets, all that good stuff, it's in this course waiting for you. So if you've always wanted to learn Photoshop and you want a fast and effective way to kickstart your learning, then make sure to check out my Photoshop Essentials course. I'll offer $50 off for the first three people to sign up using the discount code down below. So make sure to go check out the link, explore more about the course, see if it's right for you, and use that discount code to get some sweet savings on that Photoshop learning. All right guys, so if you enjoyed today's video, then make sure to hit that like button as it really does make a difference. And also consider subscribing to stay updated with more tutorials just like today's video. If you have any burning Photoshop questions or Photoshop tutorials you'd love to see me create, then make sure to leave a comment down below. And with that, I'll see you back here next time. See you then.